Well, hello, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a fantastic day. I'm glad to be back with you. Last week, you know, we were in the conference, and today, I'm back in the office. It's just me, just you. I'm here to invite you to join me tonight for Bible study. <laughs> you guessed it, Bible study. I'm excited about walking in the scriptures tonight. But before we get to the Bible study, I want to read something to you from a former insider, a young lady who formerly worked in uh, the slaughter business, the abortion clinic. And I'm not speaking to this from the point of view of a politician. I'm not speaking to this from the point of view of a Democrat or a Republican. I am neither, I, nor am I a Republican, nor am I running for office, nor am I supporting any candidate. But I do, uh, from the uh, vantage point of a Christian, a born-again believer, a believer in the scriptures, a believer in my Christian doctrine, have something to say about the slaughter of the unborn and the tricks that the wicked who are in that industry uh, pull on uh, an unsuspecting public. Uh, this, this is a letter from the Epic Times, uh, May the 6th, 2022. Uh, I'll just read just a little bit of it. She said this, uh, the thing about sin is when you're dealing with the shame and the guilt and the condemnation from your sin, you often lead other people into it uh, as a way uh, to cover up, to make yourself feel better. I certainly wasn't trying to do that on purpose. She gives her name, now believes her insider's perspective informs uh, the strength of her current pro-life stance. She said this, everything about it alarmed me. When these women would come in for their appointment to have an abortion, the first thing that we would do is to hand them a Dixie cup with a Valium. They would take the Valium, then they would sit in the waiting room. Sometimes women would come up and say, you know what? I've changed my mind. We're, we would say to them when they said we've changed my mind. OK, we understand you currently are under medication that they gave you the value. So we're required by law to monitor you. Once the volume had kicked in, one of our nurses would come out and say, now look, honey, you're here. We've got the, you've got the money. We've got everything you need to do this. So let's go ahead and take care of it for you today. Ironically, the interesting thing amidst uh, this uh, foreign care, this fake care, the lady says, was that the staff wanted those women out of the door within 20 minutes, even after having their procedure done under heavy sedation, which includes a cocktail of drugs, including fentanyl. Let me tell you, this was designed, the volume, to lower their resistance to get them to go along with uh, the abortion. And this goes on in clinics across America. You talking about wicked. My friends, I am sounding the alarm. And I'm not doing this to, to influence your vote. I don't care who you vote for. But I'm telling you, the believers need to speak up and speak out often. Last Sunday, I showed the prettiest picture that we've seen in a long time of a, this beautiful young girl. Now, I, I don't know who she is. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not very familiar with her parents. And I'm, I'm speaking to this again, Gary. I'm, I'm not coming at this from a political point of view, but from a spiritual point of view. Do you see the, the sign that this beautiful, beautiful little girl of color with beautiful hair, I tell you, she's the prettiest thing you've ever seen in your life. Uh, but uh, uh, her parents or somebody have set her up uh, at a, uh, uh, an abortion rally and given her a sign that says, our bodies, our futures, our abortions. 
Now, do you think the little girl knows what an abortion is? She, I guess I would guesstimate her to be about uh, eight at the oldest, eight, seven, six. I don't know. But do you think at this age she knows what an abortion is? Do you think that uh, 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 for, to have this posted online is a good idea? What if she grows up, and I pray that she does, and becomes pro-life? How are you going to view mom and dad, or mom or dad, or mom and mom, or dad and dad? You know, we've got a whole lot of different combinations now. Maybe cat, dog. I don't know. Uh, but how do you think that she's going to view this of her as a little girl with uh, zero say so in it. As a matter of fact, you, you look at her pretty little face. The, the expression on her face says, get me out the sun. It's hot out here. And there she is, the prettiest little thing. And then they add, they add. Here's another one. Here's another one, Brother Gary. I can't believe this. Throw in a little boy. I don't know. I don't know if it's her brother. They, they favor it. Maybe. I know nothing about them. But look at this. Um, and they add to the second caption. The homosexual flag. So not only uh, this, these little kids here pro-abortion, uh, but they're pro-homosexuality. Now, do you think they know what homosexuality is? Do you think that they're at the ages where they should be presented in uh, this manner? How bad do you want to get elected? How bad do you want to make a point to bring innocent little children into the fray? My friends, I'm telling you, we're up against a sinister lot of people who will do just about anything to promote Satan's program. And I'm saying to the believers out there, it's time for us to pray and to seek God and combat the devil as never before, to stand on the word of God and declare that we are not going to be silenced. God has called us. God has given us this great land. We love souls. People need to be saved. People need to be healed. People need to be delivered. I thank God for this, this lady who got born again and came out of the abortion industry. I'm glad she's telling the young ladies, be careful. If you're watching this, be careful. If you're getting ready to go down to the clinic to have an abortion, whatever you do, if you're in the valley of indecision, if you're 50-50, if you're thinking about keeping your baby, if you're thinking about letting the baby live, whatever you do, whatever they hand you in a cup, don't drink it. Whatever they walk up to you with smiling, here, hun, take this. Don't drink it. It's designed to break down your defenses. After a while, you'll go along with just about anything. And by the time you come out of all of that, by the time you come out and you've actually changed your mind, you got to live the rest of your life with what these people did to you. My friends, I tell you, we've got to talk about it. We've got to talk about it. I think that this is child abuse. I, I, I think that this is child abuse. Say, so, well, would you think it was child abuse if, if it was a pro-life rally? No, because uh, that's natural. Pro-life is natural. Uh, you, you get pregnant to give birth. <laughs> You didn't know that, did you? That's natural. This is natural. An abortion is a man-made interruption of a natural process. As a matter of fact, when the science says our futures, uh, with every successful abortion, somebody's future is canceled. And uh, in my clothes, uh, before I go, I don't want to go too long. I'm just so excited to be back. I love you with the love of the Lord, but I'm coming back swinging, you know. Listen, listen, I don't like the way they use the word I for my brothers and sisters out there, my black brothers and sisters. You know that this is code switching. You know, notice the word I, <laughs> two of the I are underlined. They, they're stress, I. So basically the sign says black women's bodies, black women's future, black women's abortions. Well, I tell you what my beautiful sisters and my beautiful brothers. We keep this up. There's not going to be enough of us here to even make a difference because we're being willing participants in our own demise. How do you, how do you claim that you love us and then use even children 
to promote lifestyles that will cancel our ticket. You know, uh, homosexual sex don't produce babies. That might be one of the reasons why they get along so well with the abortion industry. I want to know what do these people have against children. I want to know what do these people have against children. So I, I just had to bring it up. It was on the tip of my tongue. And I'm, there's a word from the Lord tonight. I can hardly wait for you to join me. We're going to walk through the scriptures. For you who are in the vicinity, come on out. Come on out. We're celebrating week 105 in live services. And God is keeping us. He's watching over us. He's a mighty God. I make my boast in the God of the Bible. He's good. And for all of those who were waiting and said, oh, they, they're going to die. Man, I tell you what, uh, uh, I'm glad you're not God. I'm glad the Lord God of the Bible is God. And I'm grateful that the Lord has watched over us. And here we are in week 105 in live services at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Meet me here tonight. There is a word from the Lord. I can hardly wait to study the word of the Lord with you, my friends, and those who are watching from all over, tune in tonight. Thank God for you. We love you with the love of the Lord. All of this, all this to do is for what? I'm glad you asked. It's for Bible study. <laughs> yes, Bible study. Tonight, we are going to study the word of the Lord together. We'll see you tonight.